I'm still admitting people through, so sorry, it'll be a bit um, a bit uh, <laughs> uncoordinated here at the start. So people still coming in through the waiting room. So it's a bit busy, but um, hope everyone is looking forward to this evening. And as I say, yeah, please do pop in where you're from uh, in the comment section would be great. So just a quick overview of what we're going to be doing this evening. Um, it is a complete beginner's class mm -hmm. and um, we're going to be turning a shirt into a cushion cover and this is a great project for anyone that wants to begin to learn to sew and um, it really is just four straight lines and the beauty of actually turning a shirt into a cushion cover is that you don't need to um, insert a zip because the buttons are already on the front. So if there is something, an item of clothing that you really love, maybe your, your little girl's dress, if there's something that's like a wee shirt for a wee boy that you want to turn into a cushion cover, it's absolutely perfect project. So that's what we're going to be doing here this evening, step by step. As I say, if you want to join in and um, do it as we sew, that would be great. But of course, you don't have to. You can just grab a cup of tea and enjoy the crack we'll be having a bit of banter as well it's not really that serious no it's not <laughs> <laughs> it's just a bit of crack and um mm -hmm. as i say i'm just still going to be admitting people in here to the room so there's still people coming so it's great and it's great to see that people are already telling me where they're from okay i've got someone from kilkeel never did sewing but have a sewing machine from Ballygolly as well, Natalie from County Armagh, and hi, I'm living in Ballandurry, and then there's someone from Lurgan. So we're all over the country, so it'd be great to have every county represented tonight, wouldn't no, it? Be brilliant. Yes. Um, so if everyone can keep their video on mute, that would be great. Um, but as I say, we will be recording this session. Um, so yes, chat boxes are, of course, if you have any burning questions for me um, about anything really, just pop them in and I'll do my best to answer them. So this is European Week for Waste Reduction. And what we're, what, why are we here tonight? Well, it's all about making sure that we love our clothes and that we get, we get a long life out of them. There is so much waste these days. There's too many, way too many clothes in our cupboards, isn't there, Siobhan? Oh, absolutely. We supposedly we have five times more clothes than our grandparents ever had Angeline which is yeah and when you do look in your cupboards you realize oh my goodness I have far too much stuff yeah. and um so we, I work for Keep Northern Ireland Beautiful and I'm delighted that we could bring this festival and this workshop um during this week of waste reduction and um we are delighted that we're funded by the National Lottery so I just want to give a big shout out to the National Lottery Community Fund for funding us this evening and also the Department of Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs. Without them we wouldn't be here so we really appreciate it and I suppose the key message from us is just that um, you know try to consume less, love the clothes you already have and do stuff like what Angeline's going to talk to us about this evening you know start to care for our clothes a wee bit more, learning those wee skills for sewing, for uh, mending and maybe taking a little bit further and reimagining something that you have that's something and if you follow Angeline on social media you'll see recently the beautiful outfit mm -hmm. that she created from something she bought on on vintage second hand and then created a beautiful stunning outfit for her event mm -hmm. at the weekend so so we can we can go from sewing a button to the world is our oyster sort of thing but the idea is that it's about slowing down and not buying as much stuff I suppose is the big message yeah and uh, as I said just delighted to be here this evening in the sewing cabin I know exactly. in the depths of County Down I did make a mistake and think it was County Armagh but we're actually in County Down so um, yeah. we're very close to the County Armagh border which I where I'm from uh, but this is a county down moment, so um, so hopefully we have a few people from both counties here tonight representing. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So I'll hand over. Thank to you Angela very much. And, uh, just hopefully we everybody get. enjoys enjoys this evening. Yeah. So great. No, thank you very much. Well, as I say, if you want to join in or if you just want to watch, that's absolutely perfect. We're going to start. I am going to. I think everyone is admitted in there. If anyone comes along, we'll be able to pop them in. We'll have a wee look and see if anybody else wants to come along. So I'm going to just share my screen. I'm going to start by sharing my screen here um, so you can get another view. OK, so this is I've just switched cameras. So you should be able to see my work desk here and my cup of tea. And um, we move that to the side. 
So I was actually surprised to read there recently that 60% of people um, can't, can't sew a button on. Um, so it is the skill, you know, as they say, it's sort of like a dying art and um, so on. But I do believe just through workshops like this and just through talking very positively about so on that we can bring it back and we can make it um, for a greater good as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to this is a very ragged cushion cover, as you can see. I wish I could say I have dogs, but I don't have three children. So they, they've torn this apart. So I'm going to use the inside of this uh, cushion uh, to create something new. Now, this is my husband's shirt. It doesn't fit him anymore. Small. Yeah, he's probably more a, a large now. I hope he's not listening. <laughs> no. Um, and what we do is we, first of all, we're going to take our cushion cover and we're just going to measure very quickly uh, what size it is. So this is a 16, about 16, 15 inches by... 15 so it's pretty much a square a square cushion and the beauty of this is as I said before the buttons at the front so this is going to act as our fastening um to to get the cushion insert in and out okay this is one this is the previous one I've made earlier put that to the side um, and we'll just leave this to the side here as well okay so we take the shirt and we're just going to close up all the buttons so anybody that's working with me um on time just hands up is there anyone sewing away here while i'm sewing i'd love to know let me see siobhan you can keep me right if there is see. oh there's a few hands up yes oh great yes, good yes. excellent I'd like to hear so i have something here it's called taylor's chalk but you can also use just kids chalk if you have it in the house that's really just to mark um, but you can use anything to mark, really. I just find the tailor's chalk, you can see it quite nicely on the shirt. And Angeline, where would you get tailor's chalk? So tailor's chalk, you pr probably buy it in any haberdashery. Your likes of your Tesco's not have a wee sewing stand now. Okay, so brilliant. you'll be able to pick it up there. Yeah. And it's great just for marking your fabric. And also then it'll just, you can just wash it away. So it's great. I'm just going to enter so, some people still uh, looking to come in here. So I had said 15 by 15, and as I say, measure twice, cut once. That's always very important. You see here actually that this this um this has a pattern straight across the lines, and it's all pattern matched, which is actually the sign of a really well-made shirt and probably more expensive shirt. You look and see that these it's all nicely pattern matched, which is great. Um, so we want to maintain that pattern. And if you are sewing, or you know, when you get into to sewing a wee bit longer, you'll start to look at your fabric and your patterns and just see how it all comes together and make sure it's nicely aligned because that makes sure it just looks a wee bit more professional as well. So let me see here. I'm gonna um cut with well, a see we have 15. I'm gonna bring it on down because 15 because it's a bit narrower up top. With we'll a see I'm gonna move this just to the side so you can fully see uh, this shirt that I'm working on. Okay. So you can see up top, we're only sort of getting about 14 and a half, but if we bring it down a wee bit, we'll be able to get 15. So I'm going to just mark here and here, and then we we'll bring it on down. And again, because this is actually nicely lined fabric, I can just follow that line right down. So we're looking for, it's a square cushion cover, so we're looking for 14 down as well. So there we go, down to there. Okay, so let's just mark that. And there, and then across, doing the scout freehand, and then down. Okay. And then this is lined. So if you're working with a plain shirt, you will need to measure this um, just to make sure that uh, it is all measured properly. Now, the other thing is here, okay, so before anyone shouts at me, where's your seam allowance? I'm going to cut this a wee bit larger than, um, than what I've marked. So I've marked 14 by 14. With a cushion cover, there is a wee bit of give. So, um, so you'll see the wee bit of give, which means then that uh, your cushion will be able to fit in. So that's the beauty of starting off with a project as simple as this. Um, it then gives you, you're not fitting to garments, you're not fitting to the body, so it's a wee bit easier. And can I just stop and say, it's absolutely beautiful to see. There is, I can see, um, is it uh, 
yourself, Joan, are you sewing with your, 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 what <laughs> age? Oh my goodness. Hi, there's two kids there. Absolutely beautiful. I can only see so many people on the screen, but it's absolutely lovely to see different generations sewing that's, together. That's I love that. I love it. And so, sorry, we've one wee question just come in just before you cut. Um, somebody's asking, maybe we can cover this later. Any recommendations for starter sewing machines? Yeah, yeah, great. Okay, that's a great question because I get this quite a bit because they can be quite daunting to know which one to pick. Yeah. Um, I work off the Genomi sewing machine, and that's one that I've always worked off. But the other good uh, brands is Brother is a great one. Um, also, uh, I have a couple of Singer sewing machines that I bought out in Lidl. And they're quite good as well. Actually, my first sewing machine was a ladle sewing machine. My brother bought it for Christmas and that's what really got me into sewing. Um, so always have a wee look out to see if ladle have any on offer and they're quite good. But I would also say, and again, this is my sustainable head, but always go on to like Facebook market, Marketplace and there's always people selling sewing machines. So have a wee look on, on Facebook Marketplace and see if you can pick up one there. So try that one. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut this. So as I said, I've, I've measured the 14 by 14, but we're going to cut a wee bit bigger to allow for the same allowance. So let's go ahead and start cutting. And you measure twice. Cut, cut once. Excellent. And it's not with everything in life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A wee bit bigger. Perfect. Hope everyone's getting on okay there. If you have any questions, just pop them in. Perfect. I'm just cutting it. Yep. So that's it. So, and this is this is great. This is even a good project, you know, if you're looking to make nice wee uh, cushions for Christmas. Or I actually like this fabric because I thought it was quite Christmassy. Yes, I lovely. thought it was quite nice. It'd be nice on the in the in the living room. So, um, well, it would sit nicely. So we do have other bits of fabric. And one thing is, I don't ever throw out my fabric because you never know when you might need a piece for something. Yes. But then as well, what I thought was a great idea is you know your door stops were um to keep the heat in needed this weather exactly you so you just uh you just create a what do you call it a door stop thing and you stuff all your wastage fabric in yes and that'll that'll act as your way um there's a name for that draft exclusion a draft exclusion <laughs> <laughs> thank you Siobhan. <laughs> so hopefully everyone is at this stage now we have two bits of fabric we have the outer piece of fabric and we have the inside so if everyone's happy enough if I move on to the next stage or I give everyone a wee second just to get that cut um any more questions in there I just want to check if there's anyone else in the the waiting room there yeah we're okay no other questions as yet um, but I was just going to ask you, um, Angeline, about your scissors. Yeah. Obviously, they're not just the run of the mill, maybe scissors, or do you, yeah, these, you know, yeah. do you need fabric scissors to, to sort of get a good sharp? To get a good sharp, yeah. So these are fabric scissors, and I got these in IKEA. Okay. So there is different, Fiskars is a good, is a good scissor company as well. But the key is with your scissors is to ensure that the husband doesn't get the hands on them or the kids don't get their hands on them yes. because if, when you start cutting with paper, it blunts your scissors. Yes. And it's very frustrating when you're cutting fabric and it's not cutting properly. Yeah. There's nothing more beautiful than the sound of fabric cutting properly. Yes. But when it doesn't go right for you, then, yeah. you so know. There's a few key things that people should have, like invest in a good pair of fabric scissors. Yeah. Keep them for this yes. job only. Mark them. Even, you know, yeah. it's sometimes even good to sort of just like take a bit of your fabric, you know, and then um, I would sometimes then just tie it around. So then that you're, you know that this is, yes, your fabric. This scissors. is the fabric scissors and this is all we're going to use this for. So, you know, even that sort of gives them a good idea and they know them. So yes. I just did that because that's a great practice to yeah. keep your fabric on your fabric scissors. So, you Brilliant. know, do not touch them. And a tape measure is another useful. Tape measure, yeah. I have loads of these. Um, funny, I was at a wedding, or a wedding, I wasn't at a wedding, I was at a gala ball on Saturday night and I just arrived in through the door 
and someone had them in the phone said oh someone wants to speak to you and I was like oh great oh someone's lovely they want to chat to me but it was like could you come up to the to room 241 my dress is burst oh my god <laughs> so <laughs> So it's like, oh, I've been needle and thread, but the hotel, they normally have we needle and thread set, but they didn't have any. So I do a quick run to Tesco. But it's um, like this, that skill, you know, yes, is so important that it was needed there. She didn't know what she was going to do if she wasn't able to, to get, it was actually in the worst place possible oh, as well. So these skills are just so important just in, mm -hmm. in daily life, yeah, you know. Absolutely. So um, that's us. I hope everyone's got to that stage where we've cut two, two bits of uh, fabric, the front and the back then of our cushion cover. So you have a right side and a wrong side of fabric. And when you're sewing, and it's the mistake that a lot of us make all the time, not just, I would love to say, it's just when you start sewing, you make this mistake, but it's not. It happens if you're trying to rush things. We want to make sure that you put right sides together before you sew it up. Okay, so we're going to set that there. I'm going to set that to the side and um, because what we're going to do now is we're going to set up our sewing machine and I'm going to take you through just a few bits and pieces on the sewing machine um, so that's just to get you a wee bit familiar with it. I know a lot of you here tonight will probably have have already uh, threaded your sewing machine and are familiar with it but if you're not this um, I just want to um, take you through it. Okay so hopefully you can um, see me if that's okay, can everyone see me here? Just gonna put this down. So this is my old faithful sewing machine. I do have a, a bigger one actually, but I like this uh, smaller one just to sort of use. If I'm out and about anywhere, I would take this one with me. And it's a genome and it's great. And a couple of good features on it. It has, um, is the, 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 the button that sort of puts the needle down into the fabric to start off and it, it lifted up again. Now, the other, my other sewing machine has an automatic thread cutter, which is magic. Absolutely, probably not necessary, but when you have it, it's hard to, to give up then. Um, so another thing as well is thread. When you can get bad thread and you can get good thread. You know, there's a couple of good brands out there like Coates and Moon, and I'm sure you all have heard of Gutherman. These are all great thread brands. Um, sometimes if, you know thread can't snap very easily and when you're sewing your thread keeps snapping and actually it could just be your thread so it's important to try and eliminate all of the problems because I find as a beginner sewer that if something goes wrong it puts you completely off and um, it's hard to get back on to the sewing machine again so make sure that you do invest in some good thread for your project everyone knows uh, hopefully what this is this is the bobbin um, and I'm just going to wind this bobbin up so you pop it on here and most machines are the same it's on the right hand side just beside your hand lever you pop your thread into the top um, and there's a wee there's a wee metal gauge here at the top you, you just put it around it and let me see and what I do is I wind it Make sure this okay. So I wind it around um, clockwise a couple of times and pop it into the bobbin uh, activation mode and put my foot down and it starts uh, loading up the, the bobbin thread. Make sure that doesn't keep catching on me. Let's see, there we go. This wee tool here actually prevents the thread from falling off your sewing machine, if you can see that. So we guard. Just try and get this wound up. Sometimes it sticks on you. Second on me. Can it even happen to the experts then? Oh, absolutely. I remember a lot of it with me. <laughs> here. If, it, if it happens to you, it's always happened to me. Um, I remember I was doing a stint on RTE today down in Cork. We we're doing live demos and we were taking it through the capsule, we we're making the capsule wardrobe. So I was making a, a skirt in 15 minutes and the jumper in 15 minutes, everyone was really quick, you know, had to be done. And they were recording it live. And I was on the overlocker and what happened? Didn't the blade break live on, on set? I was, oh goodness me, I was just 
And the producer was like, no, it's fine. It makes it more real. It's real life. And I said, listen, if I had a pound for every time my bobbin ran out or Fred switched. This is sticking on me. Perfect. Wind your bobbin up. You can say a happy life is a full bobbin. And anyone that sews will know that because it's not the worst when you're sewing and you run out of steam halfway through, especially if your hem's like three meters. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Perfect. It's funny because I'm sewing the other way. So that's us. So you'll always have like a wee snipper as well at the side of your sewing machine. Just put a wee blade here if you can see it. So just here at the bottom, you have your bobbin casing. Now, some people have their bobbin casing at the front here. And um, on this machine, it's just down here on the bottom. So thread anti-clockwise, pop it into the bobbin holder and um, snip it off. Now, when you're threading um, your sewing machine, all sewing machines should have numbers on them. So you'll see, you start off, go round number one, down number two, up number three, there's a wee hook here. It's like a, it's actually a tension hook up here at the top, number four, down into number five. And then there's a wee guide here, um, a wee thread guide just above your needle that you want to get. Now, I'd love to take a vote on how many people still give their thread a wee lick, because um, that's what I do. There's automatic threaders on these machines, you know, that will thread your machine automatically. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, but I still am. Um, <laughs> Give it a wee lick <laughs> and old school and struggle then to get it into the needle. Um, I don't bother with all that new sort of technology that threads it automatically. I've got it down to a, a T. So there we go. We've got we've got the bot the bottom um threads then. We're gonna pull it through. Perfect. At this stage you see two threads and you want to cut it. But you want to give it a wee bit of length here, from here until here, because if you don't, what happens is once you start sewing, it'll snap out and then you won't have enough thread. Another thing I want to point out as well, and it's something that um, I've got caught out on many times, is not using the right needle in your sewing machine. Now, when you're sewing, there's different types of fabric you can use. You can use jersey, use velvet, use leather. All, all sorts and there is different needles there for different fabrics so for example if you're sewing with a jersey or something with a stretch you want to be using a stretch needle because if you're using a normal needle it will skip a stitch so that can put you off you think it's you but it's, it's not you it's just your needle so make sure that um if you're working on a project that you're using the right needle and how how do you sorry for asking people silly questions probably but how do you know is there somewhere you can find out what fabric and needle go together? You know, I would say always Google it. If you're working with a new, a new project, yes, you want to sort of just go straight to Google and say what what is the best needle to work with, satin or silk, because yes. there's also different weights of needles. Okay. So your universal one is around eighty from memory. Um, it's eight, it's number eighty, but then they can go up to different points, like fine point, ball point. So there's a whole, there's a whole world of needles. There's then. a whole world of needles. And a lot yes. of people then start off working with jersey and then maybe don't have the right needle and then they put off. Yes. You know, because jer jersey is a nice fabric to wear because it's a bit of stretch in it, uh, and, but it can be a nightmare to sew. And then also, you know, I would use an overlocker to sew a lot of, of jersey together because it's it's great because it's just a great tool and you don't need to sort of worry about the needles. Then. And is that... Does that strengthen the seam? It strengthens the seam. It's an overlap. It. It. it almost does a double stitch, maybe. Is it that, does, yeah. yeah. It is four threads. This is a four threads. Um, and it actually then um it, it sort of finishes off your seam. So it secures it so your 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 seam won't fray, but it also then does a stitch as well, the four threads. So it's great for, for them purposes, Siobhan. So the maybe the more advanced you know, the more you do sewing, an yeah. overlocker would mm -hmm. be a good Christmas Would present. be something that, yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Your exactly, present. in your Christmas list, yeah. yeah. Well, it's not something that you need to go out and straight buy yes. straight away. Like, yeah. I don't think I had an overlocker for four or five years, at least, you know, of, of hardcore sewing. Um, but it is it is great to have it in your, your utensils. 
So um, what we're going to do, back to the cushion cover, um, what we're going to do is we're going to take um, our two bits of fabric. So just, I want everyone just to double check that we have right sides of fabric together, okay? So that your buttons are on the inside, okay? Buttons are on the inside and the right, uh, the fabric is right side at the back as well. Okay, we're going to start just um, here. Um, doesn't really matter where you start actually, but I'm just going to choose to start here, just below the button. And your seam allowance is going to be that extra wee bit that you had left um, when you cut. So I cut 14 inches and then I cut a wee bit more. So it's probably about, I've left about half an inch seam allowance the whole way around. So as I say, you always start your sewing project with your needle in. And just means that your fabric is secure and when, you, when you're getting ready to sew, it doesn't move anywhere. Um, so put your foot down, uh, get your foot in position and start sewing. Now there is a wee arrow on your sewing machine and that's uh, just a back stitch. So that just tacks your stitch in to make sure that it doesn't come apart. So always back stitch at the start and at the end of your project. So let's go. Let's put the throttle down. Obviously the the harder you put your foot down, the faster it's going to go. I have, here's another wee a tool I actually have used to sew away. This is a wee tool and um, it's got a wee magnet at the back and you set it on your sewing machine and it doesn't move. So it keeps your seam allowance equal the whole way around. That's quite nice as a wee guide to use. So we're going to get to the end here. Once you get to the corner, you put your needle down. Uh, you lift your foot at the back and you spin your fabric round, okay? So make sure the needle's down so your fabric won't move. Put your foot down and go away again to your heart's content until you get to the other end. So it's just like driving a car. The harder you put your foot down, the faster you're going to go. Okay, once you get to the end again of that, Put your foot down. I use my hand, my right hand, my hand pedal to put that down. Spin your fabric round and away you go again. You want to make sure if you've cut your shirt and it's open in here at the bottom, you want to make sure that is closed. So just grab a wee pin just so that you remember when you get to that point that that needs to stay closed. I actually forgot to say you could have pinned your two pieces of fabric together before you started. Um, I didn't um, because I, I suppose I just I'm used to sewing and I didn't join them together but what you can do is you can sit them out all nicely and pin them together so they don't move so much so if you're not as confident um, you want to then just pin them together. And then the if you're sewing along do you take the pin out? Obviously you don't sew over the pin. <laughs> yeah, no, that's... yeah no no you, you take it out. Take it yeah out. I suppose you know it depends what way you put the pen in, okay? Because another interesting point, I was uh, when I was in the sewing bee, I was pulling the pins out, and Patrick Grant he came over to me and said, you know, if you put the pins in properly, so horizontal, straight across, your your needle will just go straight through it. it oh. It'll miss it ninety nine point nine percent of the time. It'll miss it. Right. And he said all his stitchers in his factory in Blackburn, they it just fast. You know, waste time. So yes. the factory, you want to make sure everything's speedy, speedy. Yeah. So um, he said, keep them in. So I, I would keep them in, but you just need to make when sure they're in properly. Out, yeah. When you're starting yeah. out, take it easy, take it slow. You're not in any, you're not in any race to get finished. Yes. So yeah, take them out then. Brilliant. So you know, and um, we just had a wee question here, um, Angeline, the, the wee gadget that you mentioned there. Yeah. Tell me the name of it again, and I'll put it in. Yeah, in so the... I would, I would Google actually, I'll maybe have a look for the proper name, but I'd say magnetic um seam. Oh, I need to look it up, Siobhan. Okay, no problem. It's a magnetic seam guide. Okay. I wonder if we Google that, can we find? Yes, I'll see if I can. Have a wee, have a wee look there. I've got magnetic seam guide. Seam, yeah, for sewing machine. Because yeah. it is a great wee. Okay, so again, once you get to the end, you spin it round and 
just to make sure you are catching both both bits of fabric as you're sewing here, okay? So yeah. Right. But it's not a rush, you know, take your time. And if you have to stop and check your stitching, it's always better to stop and check rather than just rushing to get to the end of the seam. Okay, so I'm at that seam and turn it round. Seam the line spooler. Magnetic seam guide, press foot, yeah. Okay. Magnetic seam guide. No problem. So mine just has like a wee smiley face on it. Yeah, it's like that there. Looks like that. There's some people in the waiting room. Let me pop them in. Okay. Okay. So we're just going to keep going and just make sure when you finish off your seam here that you match the fabric that you started and that you back stitch. So always remember the back stitch. So we're going to pull it out. We're going to cut. We're just going to double check to make sure that we have caught both sides of fabric the whole way around. Yeah, we have. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to snip the edges of each of these uh, corners and that just removes any bulk in your fabric. Um, obviously not massively necessary on this project but it's just a good it's just a good habit to have to make sure that you always snip out any excess fabric so that it doesn't um, bulk. Uh, and the nice idea of this is that you can sew the whole thing and you don't have to leave. Yes, yes, a hole yeah. because you've got the because you've got the already. hole, the buttons already. Yes, that's, yes. that's really clever. exactly. Yeah, that's really good. so. That that's a great thing about it. So I'm just going to turn this inside out. So we had another wee question here uh, um, How about the corner. Yeah, and it's more a wee bit about you. Yeah, go for it. So how did you get started with sewing? Yeah, um, did you go to a physical class and learn, or did you? you know on a machine or did you just follow YouTube or or what was your wee journey? <laughs> yes so I started sewing basically out of necessity Um, I am five foot four so I'm not that tall so when I went to buy jeans they never fitted me Um, so I was always oh I can't buy them because they don't fit me so I wanted them to um just turn up trousers so it started off very much as a as a necessity and then once I started sewing a wee bit more, I decided, oh, this could actually, I actually enjoy this, I could maybe do a wee bit more with it. Um, so I thought I'll make my bridesmaids dresses. So oh, that was <laughs> it went an, from, an ambitious task. <laughs> so it went from, yeah, turning up trousers to, do you know what, I could do this, nothing like a challenge. And then I just Googled to see if there's any courses locally and the Te Belfast Met had a course, Brilliant. a six week, one night a week course. Um, so I joined it and it was very cost effective. It wasn't that expensive for the six weeks. Um, and I, you could bring along your own pattern and make what you wanted. So that was perfect. Mm -hmm. So I really went to learn the jargon of sewing because there's a lot of, of terms. Like, you know, when you talk about the bias, the salvage, yes. you know, cutting the fold, it's a different world. Yes. So I um, then just went to learn all of that, Siobhan. And that's how I really started. I laugh when you mentioned YouTube. YouTube wasn't really a big thing when I was learning to sew. Yeah. That's how old I am. <laughs> so there wasn't really that many YouTube videos. That's that's really sprouted up. But YouTube is a great resource now for learning how to sew or learning small techniques. Look at some beginner projects that you might want to make. Like there's some lovely things out there, you know, that you could make maybe sort of wee Christmas decorations with this. Or, you know, I imagine this fabric would be nice, you know, with any Christmas tree decorations that you buy for your home. Yes. You know, there's so many different things that when you start thinking about textile differently and just seeing it as it's just fabric that I can make anything with. Mm -hmm. Do you know, like even if you look at power curtains, people would just see curtains, but you need to see past that. You need to say, oh, that could be a nice skirt or a nice dress. Yes. Sounds you know, like the sound of music. <laughs> 
that's she, what yes, so you refer back to it yeah. all the time yeah. i know but that's it that's she just bought at the curtains and goes yeah there's enough there's enough meterage in that to to, to clothe all them seven kids exactly yeah so that's the thing i know because one of the one first weddings i went to with a handmade dress was uh this lovely beautiful lace but it was a bed sheet you know, do you know that is the valance of a you call it a oh, valance? Yes. yes. In the bed sheet. It had like the frill almost around the, the bottom frill. of it. So that was great because it already had a frill. So I had the frill around the, the midwiff. So it was like a it nearly acted as a peplum. Lovely. You know, and it was already it was all bias bound at the bottom. It, it saved me so much work. But I literally was wearing a bed sheet to the wedding. So, you know, at the start, when I started sewing, I didn't want to buy too much expensive fabric. So I did hunt around in the charity shops for fabric that I could just whip something yeah. up. So practice on. Practice on. on. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that's good. And it'd be lovely maybe to share your your other things that you've done since that then going on the sewing bee was a big moment yes. for you probably yeah no yeah. absolutely like I remember watching the sewing bee and actually um you know with a with a pen and paper um just trying to listen to the the jargon and um so just listen to our so I was watching the sewing bee and I was taking notes because I wanted to understand the you know the words around sewing and and uh maybe things that i didn't understand like different techniques i remember writing down french scene because when i watched the sewing bee i didn't understand what a, a french scene was but then very quickly i went on to google and was able to do that so the sewing bee is a great resource then for learning that but i always thought that i'm gonna be i want to be on that show someday and i know they talk about very much now this um manifestation is a big thing now but i do believe i think i was doing it way you know back then because i did i actually seen myself in the sewing bee um but never probably win it which is maybe maybe where i stopped my manifestation early <laughs> <laughs> it was just I wanted to be on it um so that was great I actually applied for series three of the sewing bee and I got through to the phone um stages and they asked me had I anything on in August I was like oh I was thinking this is when the filament's gonna happen I was like I'm getting married in August and they're like right okay we're gonna have to stop the process here they're like mm, it's not I don't think it's gonna work and I was like Virgo can we change the date of the <laughs> So um so I thought I thought that that was door I thought that was game over on that stage and then um it came up again there was a massive gap in between the next series of the sewing bee but thank God it came up again and I applied and I was lucky enough to get through I think there was something like twenty thousand applicants for the sewing bee and it was quite rigid the whole process you know it was even psychiatric training at the end you would make sure that you were fit to go on tv and that you know if someone said something negative online about you that it wouldn't affect you too much and you would sort of you would pass by it there's a great responsibility there so you know it was oh, it was great it was absolutely amazing being in the zone bay great experience met some great people like-minded people as well that i'm still in touch with i actually made um the wedding dress for one of my fellow contestants wife for their wedding oh, that's really I know <laughs> she liked but she said she enjoyed like my style and she's like I want you to make my wedding dress so Brilliant. she she was from um Blackburn and then the, uh, she, her husband sent over her measurements so it was Josh I said you measure her up because he could sew he was in the sewing bay and I trusted him to take the measurements and she flew in on the Friday evening we did a dress fitting on the Friday night I worked flat out on Saturday she went up to Belfast to for the day out and have a wee drink and tour, do the touristy things. Come back, there was another fitting on Saturday night, did more work, and then Sunday afternoon she left with a dress. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Pressure. Yeah. But, um, funny it just has so this to be is done me tonight, well i actually. don't know no there's always pressure there's always pressure and there's always technology and it so we have a few Never more good. wee questions here and somebody's just asked what kind of fabric and projects are good for beginners and kids projects yeah i would say always starting out you know just a cotton uh, fabric is good a cotton or a poly cotton is great because there's no real stretch um in it um you know, duvet covers are great to start with, and uh, certainly if it's for kids, you'll you'll get great duvets with beautiful colours and and uh, cartoons and everything on so it. Your so your old duvets. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. So them, yeah. So if you and you will find you'll have a lot of them in the house because you know kids sort of go through different phases. So then 
you want to then pull it out and if it's just sitting in the hot press take it out it's a great use of um old duvets and then it's a win-win situation because you can you can use it to practice on it and to create some wonderful garments like i would say a good starter project for a kid um if they want to make a garment is pajama bottoms and it's a class that i would take quite often for kids and adults alike because they walk away with a pair of pajama bottoms and it's a simple enough project that you get that satisfaction and you get that boost of confidence to actually say oh maybe i could so maybe i can so so that's a great one to start off with Brilliant. And one other wee question here, is there something through the years that you still hold as your favourite make? I know. Those bridesmaids dresses maybe? Yeah, the bridesmaids <laughs> dresses, yes. No, absolutely. They were, they were great. Like, I actually think one of the bridesmaids dresses, one of the seams wasn't sewn on it. Like, I'm completely open here. You know, I was, I was pretty much a beginner too, I think. I remember my bridesmaid turned around and said, no, but it was completely, there was three, there was three layers on it. So the, the inside one wasn't properly sewn up. And I was like, I was under so much pressure before the web. And I said, don't worry about it. As long as you can't see it on the outside, it's fine. So um, every project has its own wee quirks. But I would say it's hard to know which one's my favourite project because I sew quite a bit for special occasions. Like I made um, my kids christening, christening gown out of my mother's wedding dress. And that is sort of our heirloom. Uh, christening gown now so all my kids have been christened in the mummy's wedding dress which is lovely Absolutely. so that's it's a lovely re reuse of fabric as well um and I hope to make my own daughter's um, communion dress from my wedding dress because these are our garments that only get worn once so it's great to be able to reuse that beautiful fabric again and the beautiful lace you know it, it's such a shame to waste that and um, just sitting in the cupboard so get it out again and, and use it because it is just fabric and it's lovely it's such a lovely feeling and just to to know that it's it's getting a, another another bite of history you know you're making another bit of history with that fabric and that's the way you should think about your clothes yeah. really it you know it's a layer I on your skin created this sort of fast fashion now where you don't have that love whereas yeah those types of clothes have wonderful memories and yes. those memories can last absolutely and the more we can keep doing that with our clothes the better yeah i did i was listening to actually something today siobhan that was like um talking about you know your fabric should be like a friend you know you should treat it like a friend you know yeah. you should care for it and love it and you know, don't just don't discard it. You know, it's your friend. You, you it clothes you. It talk it tells about your personality. So you know, if you buy something, invest in it and yeah. commit to wearing it so many times, rather than you know just buying something, trying it on, and maybe even you know, I I hate this culture of just you know drops at the door. People order eight dresses and it drops at the door, and they they send them all back, and a lot of them actually don't. Get, get back, again. get resold. You know, because it's it's cheaper for the company just to throw it to landfill because they're 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 creating these garments so cheap initially that the return process for them is more costly than actually putting it back on the shelf. So that annoys me too, and I don't think enough people know that. No, because obviously they don't want to put out information on that because that's a negative, um, on the fast fashion world. Um, but it's important that people are aware of that and know that. So. Mm -hmm. So we have another wee question here. Um, have you ever dyed old fabric like duvet covers to create something new? And if so, what dye do you use? Yes, I have. And I have a dye up there actually. I'm going to show it, Siobhan, if you can grab it. It's yes. beside um, micro lights. Um, I'll show you the, the dye. A very top secret project I've been working on recently, just over to the left, it's like a wee sachet. Yeah, that's it. Um, I required a lot of dyeing um, linen fabric. So I use um, this Dylon um, dye and it is great. It's well trusted dye and it was just all you needed to do was this here dye is about a shirt, size of a shirt. Now you can buy a lot more bigger, um, bigger sachets, bigger um, bottles as well. And you can actually, I've dyed a coat before um, and I dyed it in the washing. So there is ways you can do this but with this one um, you just uh, mix it with hot water and um, salt and leave it for 45 minutes just stirring it every so often and then it'll dye your fabric for you and it's worked really well for me stronger colors you know obviously it's hard to dye something lighter you know or if you have a really strong primary color it's like painting do you know if you have a strong primary color it's hard to dye it another color but say for the likes of something quite light you know I was able to dye 
um, you know, a bright, a, a light pink color green, like a forest green, um, an olive green, and then red as well, and yellow. So the lighter the color, the easier it is to, to dye, really. So there is actually a lot of people now looking at natural dyes. Yes, yes. So the yes. flowers in your garden, absolutely, nettles, yeah. even beetroot, you know. Yes. There's all of this and we actually have a workshop happening this huh? week no sorry yes. next week but it's in Derry, and uh, so it might not suit everybody but it's in the fashion and design hub and yeah. it's a lady who's going to come in and talk about natural dyeing that's interesting so, so i think that's a really powerful thing especially if we can go out into her gardens and maybe some of these products yeah. are pollinating yeah. supporting our bees yes, and all of that exactly and then we can use them to actually dye your fabric well. that's interesting so if i i'll maybe try and get more information on the workshop yeah and share and it, it on. and um even some top tips on the natural dye side as well that's good yeah. no that's brilliant because i've seen that being done as well and you know i've seen being done as well where they um press flowers and the natural dyes of the flowers inject onto the the fabrics the satin so you have these imprints of natural flowers in your fabric and it's yes. gorgeous it looks stunning yeah. it's something that i haven't done so i'm not yes i don't know but that sounds yeah. like a really good workshop that i'd like to get involved in yes, too and um, so that sounds good um, so we have another wee question here what do you do if you make mistakes when sewing it's what i'm most afraid of okay throw the talent <laughs> no <laughs> no i'm only joking this is one thing that we all do is make mistakes and i would say nine times out of ten it's the machine's problem and not yours all the time because as a beginner this what this challenged me a lot and i you know funny i was doing an interview earlier today and that came up and one thing you know if you stitch the wrong sides of the fabric together you know get the stitch ripper out and do it there and then don't throw it to the side rectify it straight away because from uh, from experience here if you leave it to the side it's hard to pick it up then after and this problem builds in your head like everything in life this problem builds and you think oh i can't get back to that project so what i would say is um if you make a mistake you know just have a look seek advice on how you think you know what what could this problem be and um, if it's if you think it's a tension problem with your sewing machine you know there is easy easy enough ways to rectify that there's great youtube videos on on how to to fix the tension on your sewing machine you know it might be just taking the thread out and re-threading it just checking your bobbin again maybe re-threading the new bobbin and uh, making sure you've good thread as well and making sure you're using the right needle take that away if anything you take tonight is make sure that you're using the right needle for the job um, and and like any good tradesman if you don't have the right tools you know your job's so much harder so i would say um you know just make sure you have them key things and get your get your machine serviced regularly as well it's like a car you know the more you use it you have to look after it as well it needs oil it needs looked after so um spend the money and, and have it serviced you know if you're doing enough so when you want to look after it as well brilliant um let me see there do you have a set do you or sorry how do you set correct stitch tension for different fabrics yeah so again it's probably best to check online what tensions because i i couldn't round them off yeah. here and then i yeah. couldn't round them off here and then what tensions for what um fabrics but it is best having a look um online to see because you might need to even shorten your stitch uh, for some, you know, a lot of machines will have sort of the, you know, this is sort of computerized, but your machine will have stitch length and stitch width, you know, and if you're working with a fabric like Jersey, you might be doing a zigzag stitch, so you, you maybe don't want it as wide or you want it a wee bit narrower um, to sew. So it depends on what fabric you're using and working with. It's best just to have a look online. Um, and then when you buy your fabric as well, you know, the supplier that you buy your fabric off should have a fair idea as well about tension and um, about what uh, stitch lengths and, and needles and all to be using too. Two more questions, if you don't mind. Um, yeah. Can we do anything with the rest of the shirt, please? Yes, of course. So there's, as I mentioned, there's lots of different uses for bits of fabric. And it's best not to throw anything away. Like even looking at this here, and I have mentioned a couple of things like even 
Christmas decorations mm -hmm. and bits and pieces. So I had seen um, Instagram is great for these different, uh, and TikTok, I believe it or not, is great for wee um, short snippets of videos, how to use your fabric waste. Um, and one I had seen recently, and it's probably why it sticks in my head, it's Christmas and popping out. It was like a wee polystyrene ball and you sort of, you, you wrapped your fabric around it um, and it sat and you hung it up. It was quite nice. <laughs> you look at me, Siobhan, going, how would I do that? But it's, <laughs> it's good. The, also, the other thing is, is that a lot of people use fabric now to wrap presents, which is lovely, which is absolutely lovely. So if you have a wee bit of fabric and you have a wee bit of twine or something, you know, twist it and use it to, to wrap fabric instead of paper as well, the bottles and things. Um, obviously, then you have buttons on this. You know, you can use your buttons. You never want to throw them away. Um, things like... Uh, I don't know, there's, because there's different types of fabric, sometimes I would find I keep fabric and then if I'm making something, I would attach a piece of this fabric in or if I'm doing like a block print, I maybe use this incorporate it into what I'm making. So say for example, and these just ideas come into my head, <laughs> just throw them at me. So say for example, if you're making a jacket and you have like an under collar, you know, and you're making a, a, something navy, but you would use some of this fabric to actually, um, the under color bit so it makes it look really the cuffs, or yeah. the cuffs yeah now you're thinking Siobhan yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the cuffs and wee bits of detail you know and then you can use this for binding as well so it makes nice binding if you're binding the edge of something else so there's endless possibilities to use in the shirt and I wouldn't throw it out you know that's mm -hmm. not what you want to do it's nearly a fact of keeping it and then of course how did I forget patchwork quilting do you know if you want to make a nice uh, patchwork quilt, this is great fabric to work with as well, this cotton. Mm -hmm. So it's really about just getting creative and thinking about it again, like that's not the, that oh right, I've made a cushion, I'll just, I don't need that. You know, it's like, let's keep that and let's see how I can, I can use something else for it. So there's lots of different options and they nearly come when you least expect it, when you think, oh yeah, there was that fabric there, that would work really well with this year I'm making now. Yeah. And, and one of the workshops that was happening again, it was up in, in Derry uh, on Monday, the lady was taking bits of fabric um, and she had some t-shirt material as well, mm -hmm. but she would have maybe used part of that for the sleeves. Yeah you know and combine to make a new t-shirt yeah um, yes lovely. and yes one of the ladies actually brought one of her little girl's dresses that she absolutely adored her wearing but it was too small for her yeah and she used a little bit of t-shirt but used the the sleeve create it's, sleeves a little yeah. pocket and it turned it in and if anybody looks at her fashion forever instagram page they'll see some photographs lovely. of those two items and it's it might give people ideas of what they can do with those extra pieces of fabric. Absolutely. Like um, even, you know, what do you want to do when you're working with fabric and things like that? You want to open it out and you want to see how much you have, you know, and you want to start, like there's your sleeve. You know, what I would do there is I would sort of cut down this seam and open it out to see, you know, you might have enough, like you mentioned that, you know, you might have enough to make something for a, a child or, you know, even in my head there was, you know, makeup wipes. You know, reusable makeup wipes, so you're not using the cotton buds, mm -hmm. which is great as well. Um, there's uh, lots. There's just so many different things. Face, you know, the the other side of face cloths. What else have I seen that scraps have been made out? Her bobbles. You know, you can yeah. make bobbles scrunchies, out of scrunch, scrunchies, scrunchies, headbands, wee purses. Purses. Yeah, sorry, we're getting <laughs> tried again. I'm getting carried away now. But, um, but the, <laughs> the, other, the other thing was that at this event on Monday, um, the lady, she used a lot of jersey material, you know, like, um, call it sort of fleecy kind of. Yes. But she would have turned it inside out and used the inside yeah. as the new side. Ah, oh, very good. Yes. So there's, there's, there's other things that there you is. can do that you might not think about. And that you might not think about, yeah. yeah. I suppose the key to take away is don't discard things. And I know a lot of creative people, if we do, we do hoard, you know, in yeah. that sense, in a way we do keep it, but that's not, it's not a negative thing. You know, it's a good thing if you're using it, you know, make sure that, you know, it's there and that you have it for projects that might come up. And I always find that you never need to buy anything because you always have it there because you didn't throw it out. Yes. You know, I, like I, I am crazy like that. And they talk about being a minimalist and all, but sometimes it's good to keep things rather than throwing it away because it's just going to landfill. So keep it. So um oh, so the, the last question is to to sew felt for making a Christmas decoration, do you need a specific needle? Uh, 
I don't think so for felt. I think it's a universal needle. Um, should work fine on that one. Okay, yeah. Great. And somebody has made a comment here that your outfit on Saturday night deserves a show. So I don't know whether you have it handy and you could so <laughs> um what about a photo of it? Yes. I'll show you a photo. So this was um yes, so this uh outfit um cost me all of five pounds. And um I got this jumpsuit on Vinted. If anybody knows Vinted, it's a second hand, basically it's like a charity shop online where you can buy clothes. Um and it was a second hand jumpsuit. Um, from Reese, and that cost me five pound. And I made this is leftover white fabric from a wedding dress that I had made. Um, for the strap, we'll just see going the wrong way. If you can see, that's the side of the bow. Absolutely gorgeous. So if you can see that properly, um, you know that's yeah. So that's pretty much it. So sorry, it's probably not great quality on that, but if you maybe get the idea, um, the bow then. Yeah, I think it's important.